Hey everyone, I'm Chef Dennis, and welcome to Around the Kitchen Table with my guest host Susan Sarah. How you doing, Susan? Hi, I'm doing great, Chef. Now I see you. I see you're in your black chef's coat, and it looks so great. I don't think you've worn that in a while. I haven't. You know, I was so I was having so much fun with the two ones that I have that I didn't really bring out the black one for a while. But I, I figured I'd bring it out today. Whenever I make spaghetti sauce, uh, I tend to get a little messy, so I thought this might be the best way to hide the stains. Well, you know, if you remember last week, I talked a little about black mm -hmm. and, and how black shows off the food. So this is perfect. Look at the red and look at the black. You are Absolutely. just looking great. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. It's a beautiful day in Florida. The temperatures, we're expecting a cold snap. Uh, oh, go ahead, wind, go ahead, go wind, ahead. Uh, they're talking about 83. Oh, no. I, too much. I'm in the 50s here. I'm gonna, but you know what? I will tell you something. I put a fire. We put. We had a fire in the fireplace on Saturday, and so that's nice. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I love the fires. Love fires. So I went out to dinner uh, this weekend. This past weekend, I mean, I ate ate out a lot this weekend. Um, and this new steak restaurant in our town. We we live in a restaurant town. I don't know if I've mentioned that before. There are so many restaurants. This is actually a restaurant destination on Long Island. And uh, so this new one uh, opened up, a steak place, and it was so really slick, very c contemporary, violet lights in the bar, and and you know really very exciting. You know, and the food was terrific. Uh, but what was interesting is that, you know, uh, when we left, you know, I just kind of felt, I don't know, kind of left me cold a little bit. You know, I don't know if you, do you have a preference about restaurant decor and how you feel when you go to a restaurant, what you like about restaurants? I think it's got to fit the kind of restaurant I'm going to, first of all. And I have expectations just that are on my own about what type of restaurant we're going into. You know, I, I like warm, uh, warm feelings in a restaurant. I'm not big on modern decor. Uh, I hate when they have this fast, jazzy music playing. Back, oh, that's I what they had. It, I, yeah. I don't know if it's called trance or techno or what. That's exactly what they had. Don't like it. I mean, I I don't like you to listen to it. I certainly don't want to listen to it while I'm eating. In fact, I forget where we were, and I was hysterical. I came out of the bathroom. Lisa goes, "What's the matter?" She says, "Oh my God, the music they got playing in the bathroom is just like you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go." <laughs> but, you know, it's like really they need to play something a little more soothing. Uh, and yeah. you know, I think to eat, you know, it's it's got to be either nondescript in the background or soothing or you know I like earth tones. But again, you know, all these things don't make you eat faster. They make you drag the meal out. So, you know, psychological effects are sometimes important, and depending on what kind of restaurant that you're that you're having too, and how fast they want to turn the tables. That's in, that is very interesting. The other thing is, um, you know, my perception was. Uh, you know, with that type of atmosphere, the techno music and everything, I would think that they are really shooting for that maybe 30s, 40s demographic, maybe early 40s. But I don't, I don't know how they're going to do because a lot of those people, if they have, if they, it's a suburban town. If they have kids, they're home. They have to get a sitter. You know, they may not choose that place to eat at when we have 50 restaurants in town. So they're kind of putting, my point is they're kind of putting away the baby boomer, which is a huge segment who go out to eat all the time. Yep, and it's a and, segment with money. Yeah, so it it's true what you say about, uh, you know, about wanting to feel warm and, yeah. and feel uh, good. You know, yeah, I like a relaxed, uh, if I'm going out to dinner, and I, especially if I'm going to spend a lot of money, I want to be taken care of and I want to be treated nicely and I want to feel welcome and warm and comfortable. You know, some, I forget where we went and the chairs, I, I don't know who bought them, but once you sat back in them, you were leaning back and then to eat, you had to kind of scooch and it wasn't a comfortable chair to do that in to get towards the front of the chair to eat. So, I mean, you, you have to think about all aspects of your dining experience when, when, and any one component can pretty much blow it for you. 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, especially violet lighting and techno music, I don't know. But to feel welcome and warm and comfortable, yeah. that, you know, today's marinara sauce, I think that will do it. So, yeah. you know, maybe if that was a sushi restaurant, the techno and, and the yeah. lighting might have fit. But, you know, a steakhouse, you don't see too many cows in that environment. So. No. <laughs> Oh, it's true. It's true. It's true. So this is good. Now tell us, why did you choose marinara sauce this, for this well, week? Last week we did the Alfredo sauce and we were talking about basics and, and doing more basics. And when I would teach culinary, I always started, you know, after I did cutting and preparing and prepping, we always started with sauces. And you know, there were their mother sauces that you learn how to make. And from those, you can make a lot of different things. Well, when I first met Lisa, and I remember going to her house, I think she had four or five open jars of spaghetti sauce in her refrigerator. And, you know, she would never, in her wildest dreams, ever want that anymore because she knows what it's supposed to taste like now. Yeah. Um, but it's it, people have that misconception that it's time consuming, that it's difficult that you know they don't know what to put in it when it's really a very simple basic sauce now granted you can add all kinds of things to it you can change the flavors you can play with it but a basic marinara sauce is really pretty simple and when we're talking marinara we're talking under 30 minutes so I mean if that's the kind of sauce you want I don't always make marinara most of the time I make more of what's a red sauce and I cringe at the thought in Philadelphia they used to call it gravy and it would right? make me, I know that makes me crazy it make my it almost make my teeth ugh, like gravy because I'm saying gravy yep. you know I'll have gravy with that okay what do you want turkey or beef no no I want spaghetti sauce well that's not gravy okay and every pasta is not macaroni okay so get you over know, but anyway, I know um, it's fun. Maybe it's a northeast thing. Oh, I don't know, it could but it's a northeast thing. I don't know. But I, I was have lots of make it. You know, there was and, you know, this is the same sauce I have been making for oh, I hate to think, probably about 40 years. So, you know, it's simple. Wow. Okay. It, you need very few ingredients. You know, I ha mm -hmm. I have my pot on here and I'm going to turn the heat on. And I'm going to start with a little extra virgin olive oil. Now oil is one of the things that you can always add into more later. And there's some different kinds of sauces like you can keep adding oil in until you see it start to separate or see it start to break. Mm -hmm. and at that point then you've got too much oil. But most of the time you can work it back in. But a good olive oil will almost act as a thickener for the sauce a little bit. And it'll, it'll really give it a nice base. So I've got the oil in here and now I'm putting in some onion and some garlic. Okay. And then you can hear it sizzle already. And all you're going to do is you're going to let it get a little translucent. Now, now that, doesn't, that doesn't look like so much onion. I think maybe I put too much onion in my Well, you know, if you like onion, Lisa's not a big fan. Uh-huh. So a lot of what I do, I cook for Lisa. Um, and she likes onion. It's got to have onion in it. It needs onion in it. It's got to have garlic, but sometimes we do tend to overdo the amount of onion and garlic we put in it, and we're taking away from the flavor, the, the clean, pure flavors of it. Now, here I have the tomatoes. All right, now you can see that they're whole, they're in sauce, they're in a little juice here. Now, you can go in here and you can break them up by hand. Uh -huh. This is sautéing, I'm going to do this. You can break them up by hand if you want to. But what I have here, as I think I've talked about it or shown, it's an immersion blender. I'm going to shut this off real quick. Oh, see, that's exactly what I need because I always stick my hands in and I go like this and I'm taking them apart. I don't know if you guys uh, do that too, if the viewers do that. But, you know, I think that's something I've got to get. And, uh, okay, and it's that. I was, I was just saying how I do stick my hand in there and tear them all apart, and I really need one of those. Oh, absolutely. Um, I wouldn't know how to operate without one anymore. I mean, they're that easy to use. They make a little smaller ones, but again, now this is all, all made. And it, or you, if you don't have one, you can use a blender, you can use a food processor. 
these onions are starting to brown. Uh -oh. Okay, so let's can go you, back can, here. Can I ask you a question? Can you put your spoon in the sauce and so I mean the tomato, so I can see how chunky do you leave them? Well, it, it all is a matter of taste. Okay. Okay, I like chunky. I do too. But Lisa likes here's a whole one. Lisa likes them to be more pureed. Mm -hmm. so, okay. But I like a little. So now I'm just going to put these in here. Oh, and any special brand of yes. tomatoes? If you're going to go with tomatoes, one of the best brands to use, well, it doesn't have to be a name brand, but and Marzano tomatoes. Yes. And they're from Italy. Yes. They're from around uh, Mount Vesuvius, I think, Pompeii in that area. Uh -huh. And it's very, it's a lower acid tomato. Uh, Lisa had a lot of problems with acid reflux and stuff from tomato sauce, and I started using these, and she has no problems with it. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a great tomato, so. That's what I buy, too. And, you know, it depends where you are, what you get. I, I get ch uh, Cento. I have some number 10 cans. Oh. Okay, wow. because Chef hates opening up cans. <laughs> so, this way he opens up two of these. I actually have a pot of sauce on the stove back wow, there. Wow, two of those. That's a lot. Now, now, what about tomato paste? You don't use tomato no, paste. No paste. And these are the size that I used for this, and I would use okay. two. Okay. Um, but no, I don't use paste. You can, but I don't need it. I, this is going to cook. Now, this is marinara, so let me let me finish making this real quick, and we'll talk a little bit more. Sure. But, I mean, this is it. You have... The garlic, the onion, the tomato in here. Now I'm going to add some salt. And you can always re-season it, so don't get a heavy hand when you first do it. Some black pepper. And then I use, and people sometimes go wild when you tell them you do it, but I use a little bit of sugar. Yeah, I've done that too over the years. Not a lot, but right. just a little bit to take just a little of the, the, the bitterness off of it. Yeah. You know, and, and I always say it tastes better. People get crazy on it. Like I would tell my girls, they say, oh, no, I don't use sugar. I'm just put it in. It's not, you're not going to kill anybody with it, that's for sure. Uh, and it is going to improve the flavor. And going back, the philosophy is that sugar and salt are both flavor enhancers. Okay. okay. So when you think of it that way, sugar will change the flavors and, and enhance the flavor of a product the same way salt does. It just takes it in a different direction. So both flavor. So maybe they cancel each other out. Maybe you don't need either of them. Well, no, you need them because it will be flat. <laughs> and then I use some fresh basil. Oh, you put the basil in, in, the, in the, at this point. Yep, I put everything in right now. I want the basil okay. to cook into it, and I use probably more basil than you would think you need. No, I use, I'm a big believer in a lot of basil. I like basil. Yep. I like to see it. My biggest disappointment when I go and get sauce out is if I don't see a piece of green in it, I know it's not going to be good. So this is it. That's marinara sauce, and it's done in about, you're going to let it come to temperature, come up, to, you know, about a hundred. You see it bubbling now. Come up to about 180 degrees, and it would be ready to go. Wow. That's all there is to marinara. Marinara is a fresh tomato sauce, and it's going to have a bright, vibrant color. Okay, marinara, and you probably know this, but marinara came from the Italian mariner. From oh. Steps. From where? From from being on a ship. Because this is what they would cook when the ships went out. Oh, my goodness. And they made a sauce, and it had to be quick. And it was made in about a half an hour, and it was made fresh. So marinara came from, from that, and it was a sauce that they made on the ship. Now, the important thing with marinara is that it's a very fresh-tasting sauce. So it's cooked basically just enough. It's not overcooked. It's not on the stove for three or four hours, which... The pot I have back there will be on for three or four hours because I like it to be more of a tomato sauce. Well, that's something I wanted to talk to you about uh, was length of time. Sometimes you, I've seen recipes where you cook it for a couple of hours. Yep. Uh, you know, and and so 
Now, so what happens when you cook it for a long time versus? Well, it, it's the time. right fresh sauce. It, it goes from being the lively, uh, colorful red sauce with fresh flavors, tomatoes, uh, to being more of a cooked, rich sauce with a darker color and a more robust intensity to it. And it's going to have more flavor, and it's going to really, it's really going to be good, uh, a good red sauce to use uh, if you were bake, if you were making a baked pasta product, if you were making sauce, if you were using it, even just as a base for spaghetti. You know, it just has, it's, it's a more flavorful sauce. But I mean, but basically, this is all it takes. So you know, it's done in almost the time that it would take to cook the pasta, almost. And you can make it in the saute pan if you only want to make up a little bit. You can make up a small can of sauce, enough for what you're eating. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no reason, there's really no reason not to make your own. Yeah. And let's say, like, see, I made enough here. Well, see, uh, you know, chef, I'm only two people. This is too much sauce. Well, freeze two number 10 cans. Now, that'll freeze about seven or eight meals for me. You know, plus I usually one we eat when we make it. So then I've got them in the freezer, and now when I come home, instead of making sauce, all I got to do is pull one out of the freezer uh, and cook it down. Now Lisa also likes sausage in hers, and a lot of people will tell you, you know, their grandmothers always threw pork bones in there. So depending upon what flavors you like, you could have sautéed a little sausage in here. You could have roasted some pork bones and thrown them in. Or, or let them cook, simmer in the bottom of the pan, then put your onions and garlic in and, and saute them up, and then put the tomatoes in. And let it simmer, and let it steep, and leave it on the stove for hours, and let it really build those unique flavors, those wonderful flavors. Now, it, would, you, would you use any other herbs? To, you know, just as an update, just... Parsley no. would be about the only other thing I would put in there. Okay, so uh, something like thyme no. or thyme, you wouldn't do that. No, not not in a in a classic spaghetti sauce. If I'm building a different kind of sauce, and I wanted to have some unique properties, then I may change the seasoning. A lot of people will put oregano in, but oregano, unless it's some kind of a specific oreganado dish that you're making, people always connotate oregano with pizza. So. You know, you, you, you kind of lose that kind of flavor. I mean, if you want to put some marjoram in, which is like a weaker oregano, that's okay. But it really doesn't need it. This, I'm saying this is all you need. And this is like a restaurant quality sauce. And it's that simple. Sometimes we think we put two things in it, and we, we overthink the process when, it, when all it is. You know, grab a, a jar of ragu next time you're at the grocery store and see how many different ingredients are in there. We have tomatoes, olive oil, salt, pepper, fresh basil, and sugar. So that's that's all is in it. I hate to think about how many different things they throw in this. Yeah, I mean, now, can, can you tell me something? How does this differ from, say, a pizza sauce that you well, might make? A pizza sauce wouldn't be cooked. A pizza sauce, you're going to use a really heavy concentration of tomatoes. You're going to look for something that we used to call a six, in one, six to one or a seven to one ratio. And that's a crushed tomato that is going to be really, really heavy and devoid of almost any liquid other than oh, okay. the tomato. <clears throat> so that's going to be the difference. Then you mix your spices into that raw tomato product, your oregano, your basil, salt, pepper, uh, and then that's used as your pizza sauce. It's that simple. So you just need a real heavy crushed tomato. You don't have to buy uh, pizza sauce, but it's not cooked ahead of time. It's cooked on the pizza. Okay. Okay. No, I didn't know that. So because I think, I've cooked it. I think I've cooked it and put it on. You don't have to cook it. So that's done there. And I'm going to throw this pan on. I just moved that over to the stove to let it sit. And we're going to start another pan here. And I'm going to make sauce. And let that uh, I think it froze for a minute. I didn't hear what you said. Uh, I'm going to make a vegetable sauce. It's one of okay. my favorites. So, uh, and actually, I'm going to. I would put some more garlic in here, but I didn't chop any for this. 
So I will, I will always start with garlic, but I don't have it. But I'm going to throw some onions in here. Now you start with you put onions and garlic in together. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I always put them in together. So when you say start with garlic, you can follow with onions. Yeah, I would have put it in together with the onions. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I would have put in the um, chopped garlic. Uh, the sauce that I'm going to use is going to have some garlic in it, so I'm not going to be as worried about it. But generally, usually I always start any kind of a sauce that I'm making that's a red sauce, even if I'm using something I already have. Mm -hmm. I'll start it with garlic, just because I can. You know what else I, I have made many times? I've made a, uh, a ratatouille, Yes. But especially in the summer, toward the end of the summer. And then, I mean, I, I love ratatouille. In fact, you should make it so I can look, I can see your question. Well, but sometimes, I, sometimes I've added tomato sauce into that and then put that on pasta, which is so good. Well, when I used to, when I first started making ratatouille, uh, when I learned to make it at first, I started, you know, it's eggplant, it's zucchini, it's onions, it's peppers, yeah. and cans of tomatoes, and it cooks down into this lovely mush. That's of right. Those rich, delicious flavors. Well, we were in, um, where were we? <laughs> we were in the south of France, and I forget where exactly we were, uh, where the popes used to be. Um, and they served us a ratatouille, but it was roasted, and the flavors were just huh. mind blowing. Wow! And ever since then, you know, Lisa doesn't want it any other way, and you get so many different, unique flavors from it. They use this fennel, you know, like eggplant, zucchini, whole cloves of garlic, onions, and really get some amazing flavors. And now that's where you can use different herbs, yes. plus oh, herbs yeah. de Provence. Yeah. Oh, chef, I need for you to make that. Okay. I mean, and that's well, roasted. Really that's really good. Okay. Yeah, I, I really need a, to learn that one. A vegetable that you just put out to uh, at a kind of room temperature. I used to make it for functions because it was so tasty. I, you know, whole grape tomatoes in it, whole cloves of garlic that get roasted. Uh, the onions and everything kind of keeps its unique flavors. So here we have, you know, I've been putting in, I have some eggplant, some zucchini. I'm going to throw some mushrooms in here. Oh, so that's a mini ratatouille. Well, yeah, it is, but it's a, it's my, I call it, I used to call it Sicilian sauce. Whether for any other name is just that's what, you know, reminded me of all the fresh vegetables. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, it would have bell peppers in here, but Lisa doesn't eat peppers. Okay. It's, again, a fact of um, happy. But so this, I'm going to season it now with a little black pepper, a little sea salt. So you wouldn't, you're not putting other herbs in there because you're going to, because at the, it's so going to the tomato sauce is the star. Yes. Well, the vegetables are the star, but it's going to be a tomato sauce based dish. Now, if you don't want to use tomato sauce very easily, just put a little chicken stock in here if you wanted to, or just let them cook with olive oil mm -hmm. and serve it over pasta white, like an aioli type of yeah. sauce. Mm -hmm. Now, what I am going to put in here, too, is I'm going to put a little crushed red pepper. Love it. Just a little bit of heat in this sauce. It's going to get some olives because I love olives. Um, you can have capers if you wanted I'm to. I'm crazy about capers. Oh, well, I like love capers. capers. They would be wonderful in this. You know, you're almost making like a mini puttanesca. That you looks use delicious. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, that really looks great. And if you could throw some fresh tomatoes in there, I'm going to throw a little uh -huh. bacon in now. Nice. You could put some spinach in here, artichokes. Now, would you put something like uh, broccoli rabe in there? Oh, yeah. But it would be cooked. Okay. I wouldn't yeah. put it in, just put it in because it's going to be really, really tough. So I would cook the broccoli rabe first. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, you're going to put it in. And you're going to have to cook everything else too long. Because this is basically, 
you noticed I put the eggplant in first because that takes the longest to cook. Then the zucchini followed with the mushrooms and then the olives. And the things that take less time to cook, you put in after one ingredient has kind of reached to where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. And look how healthy that is. Oh my God. How healthy. Even if you just like, if you wanted to take some fresh grape tomatoes and throw them in here right now, put it over, serve it over pasta, and just drizzle a little more really good olive oil over top mm -hmm. of it, that's all you need. That's yeah. It. Some cheese. That's a great meatless Monday meal. Yeah. Okay, but this is pretty much where it is. Now, I'm just going to throw in a little red sauce. And, you know, it just looks so substantial. I think, I think that's something that would make you full right away. It really looks... Uh, very filling. Who needs who needs me? See, now I'm not putting a lot of red sauce in. I'm just tying it together a little bit. I want to still see the vegetables. Uh huh. That's why I'm saying you know if you wanted to, it could very simply be done with just a white sauce. Now of course I would hit it with a little bit of cheese before I go to serve it. Oh nice. And we're done. Okay. Wow. Now that's a nice meal. So if you have marinara in the refrigerator, you know, you could make this with it very simply. I mean, you could muddy it all up and put some ricotta in there too, right? Oh, my God, you certainly <laughs> could. Who doesn't love that? Just Lovely. Just Lovely dish with it with ricotta. Okay, now here's nice. where we're going to go. We have one more sauce for you. Oh, my goodness. All right, now, I talked last week about making a rosa sauce. So I'm going to take some of this fresh marinara that I just made and I'm going to put in about two cups of marinara. Now I see why you have those gigantic cans. <laughs> well it's because like I said I don't like opening cans. I used to buy these wonderful jars because I didn't have to do them. And then I'm going to add in some heavy cream. Okay. And then I'm going to add in grated cheese. Oh. All right. And this isn't going to heat because it's not the right kind of pan, but uh -huh. I'm going to show you what it's going to mix to. And then I would just put this on the stove for a little while and let it get nice and hot and maybe reduce just a little bit. Now, what happens to the cheese when you when you heat it? You put that much cheese in it. What oh, if yeah. you heated it a little too much? No, it's fine. I actually could have used a little bit more. Okay. Now this does, this will be tastier. A little salt in it, a little black pepper. This will be tastier if it is with an, an older sauce, like the sauce I have on the stove. Mm -hmm. It will have a lot more body and flavor. That's what I was going to ask you about these sauces held over for a day. Well, this is what I do. This big pot of sauce that I have on the stove is going to sit in the refrigerator for three days. Then I'm going to freeze it. Wow. Okay. okay. So that's your secret weapon. That I'm going to let it age. I'm going to let as it as it ages, it's also going to thicken a little bit on me. It's going to get more. Huh? It's going to have an, a more a thicker quality to it, and it's going to have a more robust flavor because all the seasonings are going to come through and cook through. You can eat it right away. It's not going to be as good. It's just like with a soup. It's not going to be as good. It's going to be good the day you serve it. But that next day when you reheat that soup and everything has had a chance to really come together, it's really flavorful. So the flavors intensify. So there's really no need to cook the death out of oh, no. a whole day cooking. You just kind of keep it in the refrigerator and the flavors will develop and intensify. And I would imagine be taste even fresher. Well, I, I do like result. I do like to cook a minimum of two hours. When I when I cook, okay. like now, if we came home, we were hungry, and I didn't have any sauce, I would just take a sauté pan, throw stuff in there, and I would make a real fresh, quick sauce, and it would be fine. It would be as good. It would be. It wouldn't have that real intense tomato flavor, but it would have a nice, fresh tomato flavor, and it would be a nice, fast, quick dinner. You know, it's something I could throw in the stove and be done at the table in a half an hour. Okay, the other sauce, 
you know, that's why I say I, I make a larger portion of it, and it's just as simple. And and you can make it on a day when you're watching, like if you if you're home and your husband's watching games, or like I'm watching games, I'll throw it on on a Sunday usually and let it cook while I'm watching football all day. Okay. And then at halftime, I cook some pasta, we eat, and I go back the the rest of the game. But but like I said, it's going to go in the refrigerator. It's going to sit. Uh -huh. It's going to age. I mean, it can go up to five days if you want to push it. A, a, one day is the bare minimum. Give it at least a day before you freeze it. Wow. It can, it can be in containers. Like once it cools, like I'll, I have these little plastic containers, and I'll set them up, and I'll put them into the refrigerator set up, and then I'll let them sit in there for three days. It depends on how ambitious I am when I do yeah. it. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, or what time of day it gets done. If it's too late at night, it's going in there like that. Then, uh, then let, let me ask you, once, then when you, you use it again, will you add more basil? No, not okay. usually. No, usually uh, the only thing I add to it is I add a little water because it thickens up. It's cooking. I generally cook it from a frozen state, uh, so mm -hmm. it, it, it reduces a little bit more as it cooks to defrost. Uh, so I add a little bit more water to it. And just I toss the pasta in it, and you know I, I used to in the old days you would serve the sauce over top of it. You know I, it goes back into the pot after I drain it. I put the sauce in it. I lease the sausages on the side, and I just toss it, and then I serve it and put the sausage on top and garnish it with a little cheese or you know if I have some herbs, some parsley or or basil cut, I can garnish it with that. But usually I don't. It's just generally served. We sit down and eat. Okay, I think I'm going to make that and then have it, I don't know, maybe later this week. <laughs> so this, I mean, this rosa sauce is very nice, and you'll be surprised at how tasty it is. You can use half and half. You can use light cream. Um, again, this is like a splurge kind of dinner. It's, it's one part cream to two parts marinara. I mean, it can go in any direction you want. I make a sauce like this. And I actually go one part chicken base into it too. Chicken, oh, nice! Chicken stock into it. Yeah. Uh, and and one leave. It's like one part stock. It's one part sauce, and it's one part cream. Uh huh. And it's a thinner kind of a sauce, and then I put prosciutto and peas in it. Oh. And that's really and and you know some chunkier oh. tomatoes at that point, and that's really a real nice light, very quick sauce to make. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. And then is that something, I mean, given the cream and the cheese and everything, can you freeze that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this will freeze well. You know, it, it, it may it may get a little on the defrost. The The ice crystals are going to change the consistency of it a little bit, and then yeah. you may need to add a little water. Generally, before I put anything else into it, I'll just put a little water into it and see if the water brings it back. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, these are fantastic. These are just, I mean, you know, wonderful meals. One, they just look great. Very easy to make, like I said, and healthy with the vegetables. You know, I'm actually, I'll make a soup with what I have left. Uh -huh. uh, or that are making, maybe I'll make some more vegetable stock and just sauce and freeze it, and then we'll have that too. Yeah. There you go. Probably. There you go. I think this is, this is just... This has been so great, and everyone on the comment stream stream is just loving it. They love the olives, and uh, you know, just really love everything about it. So this is this was really a great, uh, you know, great tips, great Thanks. tips. I learned I learned quite a bit today on the show. Well, you know, this is like I said, this is restaurant style. This is how I was taught to make it uh, the very first time. Uh, I, I did make it, and it's traveled with me no matter where I'm at and no matter who I'm cooking for. Mm -hmm. Now, Coach G. Moore says, what do you think of dill weed? Well, Coach, I don't, I don't think – I'm not a big fan of dill, but to me, when I think of dill, I think of fish or chicken. Yeah. I, I would never put it in a red sauce, but, you know, if it's something you like and you enjoy the flavors, well, then by all means, you know, do it. Uh, I would always use fresh and maybe try it as a garnish or try it with the meat and mix it in. But, you know, for me, it's just it's a pretty basic. It's classic. I may make another kind of a dish out of it. I mean, I use marinara to make chicken pepperoni that I love. Uh, it has a dash of that. Sometimes I'll put a little red sauce into white sauces just to change them up. I mean, you can do so much with it. Yeah, well, you know, that's the thing. You know, just what you said, basic. You can make... 
those big cans and make the big, uh, you know, the basic sauce, and then, you know, uh, store them in different uh, containers, yeah. and then you can mix it up. Then you can mix it up. Then when you take it out again, the experiment with different, uh, you know, for example, I love tarragon. Mm -hmm. It's a little a bit bit of a licorice sort of, and which I think a little bit on the sweet side. Licorice. I love tarragon. I I don't know. To me, that could maybe. You know, you could try it. Uh, yeah. I mean, the one thing that I think I found the freakiest. I made two sauces that somebody taught me one time, and I looked at them and thought he was insane. And he was, but that was a whole other issue. But, but <laughs> the one sauce is that was a sambuca sauce, and I don't like sambuca, but it was mushrooms and it was the brujol sauce. I think we made that. Well yes. Back, right, and it was mushrooms, sambuca, red sauce, and a good handful of cheese, and it is just really. Oh, really? Really tasty. And then the other one he made was with um, an orange liqueur, triple sec. And the triple sec was good, but I think I would have had to find the right vehicle to go with it. It, it was it wasn't necessarily good with what I made, so you need that you need that vehicle to serve that sauce with. So if you have a tarragon sauce, you need that vehicle. You know, and you know, thinking about it, that might be something that would be interesting with mussels. Oh. It, yeah, it could be. Um, yeah. I feel like the tarragon would kind of soften the flavors a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of what I feel. So, who knows? I'll report back. I'll try and, to. You know, and it's that. like you said with the ricotta too. You know, you've got your red sauce. Well, take a half a take a cup of ricotta instead of the cream and mix it into it. And you know, and then lots of times that's like the perfect way to make a baked yeah. pasta. Yeah. Mix it with your noodles, pop it in the oven, cover it with mozzarella cheese, and you're good to go. I know. I think it's all about having it on hand and ready to go and get those big cans, yeah. and then there you go. You have well, it. One of the things I do do is I keep a couple separate with no meat in them, with just sauce, because we like chicken parm. I mean, and really, when you go out for chicken parm, it's going to cost you 14 bucks, 12 bucks. Yes. You know, and to make it is going to be about three dollars so and it's yeah. gonna be better <laughs> yeah no it's a basic just yeah. like you said so you know develop a tech you know style that works for you freeze your sauces and you know you'll be amazed at how good they are and how fast and easy dinner becomes and you'll just keep making them from that point on yeah well thank you for this uh, you know this these uh, beautiful dishes very very interesting all right. Well, great. I'm glad everyone could come by, and uh, thanks so much for stopping around our kitchen table. And I hope to see you next week. Yeah. See bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.